Hello, my friends. I welcome you once again to today's edition of Word of Life. And this is episode 20, series 1. And today, we want to look at righteousness in the Old Testament. Righteousness in the Old Testament. How did the people of the Old Testament become righteous? By what means? Was it by obeying the law? Was it by grace? How did they become righteous in the Old Testament? How did God render them righteous? And today we want to look at the account of Noah. And let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God here is the Bible saying Noah was a just man and perfect Noah was a perfect man in his generation and he walked with God so the question I want to ask here is was Noah righteous by his own deed as he attained a sinless perfection was it because he lived a perfect life without any sin without any iota of sin in his life what made Noah perfect as the Bible described let's look at Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This was what transpired first before Noah became perfect in verse 9. So this suggests and this implies that any time a man found grace in the eyes of the Lord, that man becomes righteous automatically. That man becomes perfect automatically. Anytime a man, anytime God give his grace upon someone or pour his grace upon someone, that man becomes righteous. All his sins are wiped away because the Bible says love covers multitude of sins so today it is the same grace that jesus has brought unto all men all you need to do is to accept the grace of god by believing in the name of the holy son of god by believing in jesus and by receiving him into your life as your lord and your savior this is how you receive the grace of God that came through Jesus. So Noah wasn't really perfect, not because Noah didn't sin. He never committed any sin and then he lived all his life so holy, so perfect. That's what the Bible was describing. No, it was simply because in Genesis chapter 6 verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord then in verse 9 after he found grace in verse 8 in verse 9 he became perfect so anytime a man finds grace in the eyes of the Lord he becomes perfect today it is the same grace that Jesus has given to you my friend just believe in him just receive him as your Lord and your Savior and you really really be, be very perfect in the eyes of the Lord. Now, let's look at what happened after the flood. Let's look at, uh, let's probe more, a bit more into the life of, of Noah after the flood. And that's from Genesis chapter 9, verse 18 to 27. Verse 18. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham. And Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan, 
Take note. Verse 19. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole world, or the whole earth, overspread. 20. And Noah began to be an husband man, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tents. 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backwards and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness 24 and noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him and he said curse be canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren and he said blessed be the lord god of shem and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. This was what Noah did. And before I even proceed, the first question I want to ask is, was that a life, the life of a perfect man was that a life the life of a righteous person a just person this was exactly what happened after the flood Noah planted a vineyard and then he prepared wine out of it and he drank it and he became intoxicated and he stripped naked the bible never stated anywhere that it was his son Ham who stripped him naked never and sometimes you know how funny and stupid some people behave when they are drunk if they are losing themselves out they don't know if they are stripping themselves naked they don't even know when they are speaking loose talk, they don't even know. When they are falling into the gutters, they don't even know. And see how they behave sometimes. Noah was stripped naked. The Bible didn't say his son, Ham, stripped him naked. It was never stated anywhere that the son, Ham, mocked him. Never. The Bible didn't say the son insulted him or the son laughed at, uh, 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 at him. No. Then after he woke up from his wine, he began to pronounce curse. And he cursed not just harm. He didn't curse harm directly, but he cursed the generation of harm. First of all, let's examine this. There's no way a person will close his eyes whilst walking. No. Unless he has a foreknowledge of something he wanted to prevent his eyes from seeing. So until you have a foreknowledge that there's something here I don't want to see, there's no way a rational human being will just be walking and close his eyes whilst walking. So definitely, Ham will find it difficult to to prevent seeing what he saw. He was just walking into the pen and he saw what he saw. And what did, did he do? As a younger brother, he's just a younger brother. He's not the elderly brother. He didn't have much wisdom because he's young. So he's the younger brother. What did he do? He went and informed 
the, the, the elderly brother and the other one, he went and informed them. He didn't go and inform the public. No. He didn't go and inform other people. No. He went and informed the brothers. Oh, this was what happened. Or this is what uh, our father, this is the condition of our father. Then the elderly brother, Shem, and then the younger one, the youngest one, Japheth, they took clothes and they walked backwards. They walked backwards because they had a pre-knowledge of something they don't want to see. And that was why they walked backwards. And then they went and covered the nakedness of their father, Noah. Now, you have to, now after Noah, after Noah woke up from his wine, then he realized what happened. Where did he, where was it written in the Bible that as a child of God, as a perfect man, as a righteous man, you should be cursing your children. There's no way in the Bible where it is written that children of God curse your children, curse your own children. No. Where is it written in the Bible that children of God, as a man of God, as a child of God, curse the generation of your own children? No. Where is it written that as a child of God, drink wine and be drunk? No. And Noah went ahead and cursed the generation, the fourth born of Ham. He went ahead and cursed Canaan. And I believe at the time, Canaan wasn't even born. But Noah went ahead and cursed the generation of Ham. After all, if Ham wronged you. If Noah felt that he was uh, he was offended or uh, Ham, his own son, wronged him, then whatever you want to say against your own son, you say it against your own son and you leave it there. You don't go further to cursing your the generation of your son. No, that's so bad. That's so bad. That's so so very bad. So he went ahead and cursed the generation of, of Ham. And today, people believe, some theologians believe that Canaan is Africa today. And today, as you can see, Africa has become one of the least, the least developed continents in the whole world. And Africa has become Africa has become the slave the slave to all other other world Africa has become slave to the European world Africa has become slave to many other people in the continent and that is what some theologians believe and if that is true you could imagine the, the, the effects of so-called righteous person, what he has done. So Noah was righteous, not because he attained sinless perfection. Noah was righteous, not because he was able to, to, to live a perfect life or not because he never sinned but simply because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So I want to entreat you that grace, grace is the only thing that renders a man perfect, that renders a man righteous. Our own work, our own works, the works of the Lord can never in any way make us righteous it can never render us perfect 
except for the grace of God, except for the love of God. Therefore, I beseech you, my friend, cling unto the love of God, cling unto the grace of God, and you will be righteous. On this note, on this note, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you. Next time we will look at Abraham and many others. I wish you all the best.